Hi everybody, it's Chris and welcome back to another video. Thank you very much for joining me now and thank you to everybody who takes the time to watch these videos, to like, subscribe and of course leave comments as well. I love hearing what you think about the records I show, the order I sometimes put them in and of course your recommendations for things that I should add to my collection. What I've got here today is 40 albums that I've probably shared before but I've never been brave enough to put them into a rank order. These are my 40 favourite punk, new wave, post-punk albums in order. Um, there's some absolute classics here. Now, despite, you know, Punk's seven inch legacy, there were some brilliant albums that came out during this time as well. And I think these are the 40 that you must own, must have in your collection if you like this sort of music. But there's one missing and that's Pink Flag by Wire. I don't have it on CD either as well, or vinyl. Um, I didn't get them back in the day. I remember John Peel playing them and it's, you know, it's, Pink Flag's an album with 21 songs, some of which are over 30 seconds long and... I didn't really get them at the time. I never bought the album. I wish I had because now when I see it, it's prohibitively expensive. But uh, that would definitely be in this 40. I just don't know where. So I've got 39 albums to physically show you. So at 39, debut from Generation X, an album that misses out their classic single of the time, which was Your Generation. Now, I understand the idea of having a non-album track because it boosted sales and singles were big in the kind of 70s. Uh, but this album would have been enhanced by that track being here. But Youth, 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 Kiss Me Deadly, Ready, Steady, Go. Some good tracks on here just would have been better with your generation. At number uh, 38, we've got the first album from Dead Boys. I don't know how many albums they did. This may be their only one. Young, Loud and Snotty on Sire Records. In Sonic Reducer, you have one of the greatest songs of this particular genre. It's fantastic. It's an American band. I'm not sure where they were from in the States, but they relocated to New York to be part of the CBGB scene. And, um, and Sonic Reducer is a classic. Um, at number 37, the debut from Ultravox, but importantly with an exclamation mark, because this is the John Fox version, not the mid -year version. And therefore that makes them the punky new wave version with their kind of angular, jaggedy chords and so on. Some really good stuff on Ha 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 by Ultravox as their debut. Now I've got one album for any, from any one band in this list, but I've got one compilation and I think this is a must have punk compilation because it's UK punk at its earliest and its rawest. This is live at the Roxy recorded in very early 77. This has got Slaughter and the Dogs, Wire, it's got the adverts, it's got um, Eater on it as well. Um, it's got Buzzcocks, um, you know, really good raw album. Eater is a, are a good band. I wish I had their album. I probably would have included it in this um, this top 40 had I had their first album as well. But this is a must have, really UK punk at its rawest. At number 35 from Scotland, from Fife in fact, this is Rosillos and their debut, Can't Stand the Rosillos, a band that put fun back into music. Lots of kind of cartoon sci-fi themes in here. Uh, Flying Saucer Attack, for example, but their classic songs, things like uh, Top of the Pops and My Baby Does Good Sculptures are also on here. Played at 100 miles an hour kind of stuff, but really good fun with some great pop tunes on it. At number 34, debut from X-Ray Specs. This is Germ Free Adolescence. Another album from the punk genre that misses out. I think their classic single, which is Oh Bondage Up Yours, but it does have the way that the day the world turned day glow. Uh, Germ Free Adolescence and um, In Identity, an absolute classic. I can't listen to that album all the way through. I can listen to the select songs. It's just a bit too much to listen to all at once. At number 33, a band I think that bridge pub rock with, with punk, and I don't include pub rock today, so I've got no Dr. Feelgood or Motors, but I am going to include Eddie and the Hot Rods. I just think um, Do Anything You Want to Do was a song that uh, was so big in 77 here in the UK. It's on this album. It's a really good album. That particular single was brought out under the name of the Rods, but obviously most of the time they were Eddie and the Hot Rods. And it has a real brilliant long hard rock song that closes down called The Beginning of the End, which is really, really good. So that's the Eddie and the Hot Rods, Life on the Line, at number 33. At 32, Middlesex Answers to the Ramones. Lots of great songs on here. Shadow, um, uh, I Don't Need to Tell Her, Ain't Got a Clue, all of which were singles. And they've got a fantastic version of Then I Kissed Her by uh, Phil Spector, which is Then I Kicked Her. Great stuff from The Lurkers. At 31, the debut from The Only Ones. This is the album that includes Another Girl, Another Planet, uh, you know, an amazing new wave classic. Um, just shows off how brilliant this band were in terms of you know um, being musicians they were really good musicians this lot um, this is a, a band though that I think 
that particular song, Another Girl, Another Planet, is like an albatross around their neck because I think this is an album which is overshadowed by that song. I think it's the best song on it, but it, you know, it's hard to match a song of that quality. But that's a decent album, debut album from The Only Ones, and that was at 31. At number 30, Tom Robinson, Power in the Darkness. A guy who um, was, you know, very, very politically aware. Uh, he was part of the anti-Nazi league, Rock Against Racism. God, we could do with people like this now. Um, but this is a really tidy album, but it misses out 246 uh, Motorway and the BBC band song Glad To Be Gay, which is a shame because those would have been fantastic additions to what is a really solid album from Tom Robinson. At number 29, Scared To Dance by The Skids. Um, lyrically, I've no idea what it's on about because I just can't make out what Richard Jobson, the vocalist, is saying. But uh, guitar is great. Lots of kind of... Uh, marching kind of sounds, military themes. This is the album with Into the Valley. It's also got The Saints Are Coming. It's uh, a really good album. Great guitar from Stuart Adamson. At number 28, another band who put uh, humour back into uh, music. This is At the Chelsea Nightclub by the members who brought us, of course, Sounds of the Suburb, which is on here. Brilliant song, as is Solitary Confinement, re-recorded from the stiff single days, but a fantastic song. I love it. Lyrically brilliant. At number 27, the debut from the adverts, Crossing the Red Sea with the adverts, packed full of singles. Originally, this didn't have Gary Gilmore's eyes there, classic. This is a repress, so it does include that song. It's got the other singles, No Time to 21, Safety in Numbers, one called Wonders, but a, a great album. TV Smith, their main guy, was a real um, good storyteller, lyrically really strong, and in Gay Advert, they had one of the real icons of this era. At number 26, a band, a group of art students from Rhode Island, I think, who were very much part of the CBGB scene, um, very different, and that's uh, Talking Heads. This is their debut, 77. Includes, it included uh, Tina Weymouth on, on bass, who was the heartthrob of lots of people who are into this kind of music in this time. But, oh, Love Comes to Town, Compassion, Psycho Killer, fantastic. You know, um, David Byrne isn't for everyone. He's, he's quirky and interesting, and his vocals sometimes I'm ready for them and other times I'm not. This is not their best album, but it's, I think, a really important album in this particular genre. In number 25, we've got the debut from XTC, so a band from Swindon here in the UK. This, I think, is um, it's a really solid debut. It's not their best album, but it's really in tune with a kind of punk new wave, post-punk kind of feel. Really good musicians, some good angular, jaggedy kind of stuff on here. Some great guitar work, radios in motion, great stuff. It's also got the single Statue of Liberty on it as well, but good debut album from XTC. At number 24, debut from UK Subs, another kind of blues. This has got about five singles on it, including Stranglehold, their classic CID. But a lot of, they've been re-recorded and I think the edges have been taken off. Uh, the the sound of them a little bit it's a bit more sanitized and in places it's quite it's quite metallic um but a great album a bit late to the party despite the fact that their singer charlie harper was quite old um at number 23 the debut from magazine how devoto left uh, buzzcocks went over created his own band really good tight band he's got here john mcgeoch influential guitarist also plays saxophone definitive gaze love that shot by both sides classic uh, motorcade uh, the light pours out of me a really good album i often thought the correct use of soap their third album was slightly better but i think i'm edging this one as being their best at number 22 the debut from a very young elvis costello one of the greatest uh, songwriters from the kind of 70s and, and 80s i think maybe not the best singer but certainly one of the best songwriters this is a fab debut i remember seeing him do i think it was angels want to wear red shoes on top of the pops and just thought he was really different this is a an album full of like little short snappy new wavy songs allison's on here angel want to wear my uh, red shoes lesson zero mystery dance great stuff love it at number 21, debut from Susie and the Banshees. Is it their best album? No, but it's a really important album, The Scream. It's, you know, it's a real post-punk statement. It doesn't include their classic, like lots of these, Hong Kong Garden, which I think would have enhanced it hugely, the song that was inspired by a Chinese takeaway in Bromley. But uh, Susie and the Banshees, um, fantastic album. Really good debut. Uh, next up, uh, people often say that if uh, the Beatles had gone punk, they would have sounded like this. This is The Boys, their debut album. Really good three-minute pop songs on here on it with a punky vibe. These guys had real punk uh, credentials. So uh, Sick On You, I Don't Care, and the absolute classic First Time, which is a punk 
uh, classic for sure. At number 19, we've got New Boots and Panties by Ian Dury. I love this album. It's so quirky and interesting, different. Lyrically, it's brilliant. I, I think if you don't get Cockney rhyming slang, I'm not sure you get the lyrics on this as much as maybe you should. But this is a great album. That's his son, I believe, there. Uh, you can see Woolworths uh, in the reflection there. And that was a place where people of my age here in the UK would buy lots of our singles. But this is an absolute classic. And I, I went to the National Portrait Gallery in London very recently to look at a few exhibitions there. And this album cover is actually in the National Portrait Gallery. What a classic cover. What a classic album. Love it. At number 18, we've got the debut album from television, Marky Moon. Very much part of that CBGB scene. And a lot more kind of... Um, with that punk ethos and a lot of those bands. So with Blondie, you've got, you know, someone who was a model and a folk singer. With Patti Smith, you've got someone who's a journalist and a poet. You know, the Ramones were reasonably middle class. Um, you know, in Talking Heads, were a bunch of art students. This lot would, you know, a couple of them, especially Tom Verlaine and Richard Hell, when he was in the band, although he's not on this album. Um, you know, they were high school dropouts. They were, you know, um, they had criminal records. So they very much had that kind of punk ethos. But this is a classic debut album, which I haven't always got, if I'm really honest. A Marky Moon is a guitar classic. See No Evil, Venus, Friction, Elevation, all really good songs. I do really enjoy it. Um, is it as good as people make out? Mm, I'm not sure. But Marky Moon, a guitar classic. At number uh, 17, we've got uh, the third album by The Dictators. It kicks off with a song called Faster and Louder, which really summarises this album. It is faster and louder than anything they've done um, before this point, and it is definitely them at their punkest. Allegedly, this was recorded live, and it, it sounds like a band at their absolute best, I think. There's a track on here called Stay With Me, which is just brilliant just absolutely brilliant and the guy who counts it in is bruce springsteen and i think he also plays uncredited rhythm guitar uh, that's blood brothers by the dictators new york band at number 16, the debut from The Undertones. This um, is a great album. Again, why didn't it have Teenage Kicks or Get Over You on it? That would have made such a big difference. But in Here Comes the Summer, they have just one of the best pop tunes from the 1970s. If that had been done by a more mainstream band, that song would have been massive. This is a great um, debut. Lots of these albums, if you probably noticed the debuts, and I think it's very, you know... There are lots of punk bands who peaked on their debuts. For me, The Undertones did. As I think, so did this band, The Buzzcocks. This is another music, another kitchen. This is uh, the debut album from The Buzzcocks. It features a lot of classic songs. I don't mind. Fiction, Romance, Autonomy, which I really like. Fast Cars, Love Battery, 60. It's some great tunes on here. Really good, uh, kind of real good pop sensibility Buzzcocks had. And that's definitely to the fore on their debut. And that's at 15. At 14, got the debut from the Vibrators. Probably a nostalgic pick, this Pure Mania. I think V2, their second album, is probably a more consistent album. But in with Into the Future, Baby Baby, um, Petrol, Whips and Furs, Stiff Little Fingers, the song that inspired that, that band's name, and London Girls. You've got some classic pop songs. Decent musicians. This were a kind of a, a pub rock band uh, in many ways that became punky, um, I think. Um, but London Girls, oh, it's just brilliant. At number um, 13, this is a guy who's quite hard to kind of pigeonhole, and I think he sits in this. I'm going to include him anyway, because I love this album. This is Jonathan Richmond's and the Modern Lovers. This is their debut album. It has one of my favourite songs from this era in Roadrunner. I play that weekly. I love that song. But Astral Plane, Old World, Pablo Picasso, Modern World. Ah, oh, some brilliant songs on here. It's quirky and it's different and it's not very punky, but wow, is it ever good. At number 12, Band from Leeds, hugely influential, and it's uh, Entertainment by Gang of Four. In one song, um, Damaged Goods, they have one of the greatest songs of this whole era, and definitely, I think, the greatest uh, post-punk song. I just think it's brilliant. It's, uh, it's, it's almost danceable for a song of that kind of uh, ilk, but yeah, brilliant. Entertainment, hugely influential, really interesting album. This is another influential album at number 11. Again, I had reservations about including it, but I'm going to have to because Unknown Pleasures by Joy Division is an absolute classic and it's a post-punk classic. Um, you know, it, it's not maybe, it's not obviously not punky, but it is a post-punk classic and 
Again, this does include Love Will Tear Us Apart, which I think is a brilliant, brilliant tune. Would that enhance it? Yes. Would it really fit in? Probably not. It's, a, it's an amazing album with a cover that I think is just superb. OK, we're in the top 10. So um, I say really serious. I think a lot of those are really serious. Uh, at number 10, a band that were quite late to the party, but oh, I'm so glad they came to it. This is The Crack by The Ruts, their debut. Oh, this this is a brilliant album. Babylon's Burning that kicks off the album is, is just one of the best punk songs ever. Dope for Guns, um, Jar War, kind of a bit dubby. Savage Circle is quite metallic. Uh, it's a live track as well. I think it's the last one. Is it Human Punk's a live track? You know, the lead singer who's sadly not with us anymore, um, Malcolm um, Owen, he just growls his way through this. What a presence that, that guy had as a vocalist. But uh, yeah, Human Punk, I think it was recorded at the Marquee in 77 and tacked onto the end. But brilliant album from The Ruts, The Crack. At number nine, New York band, uh, The Heartbreakers, their only album, LAMF. This is raw as you like. Some people say the production is muddy. I don't think it is, but it's a just, I love this album. Born to Lose, I Wanna Be Loved, Chinese Rocks, Get Off the Phone, One Track Mind, one of my favourite songs of this entire era. Uh, love it. Brilliant. It has a drum beat at the start, uh, which is very similar to the drum beat of a song that kicks off side two on this album, The Debut from The Damned, an album that sounds like the cover. It just looks that kind of chaotic and mad. In Neat, Neat, Neat and New Rose, you have two of the classic songs of the punk genre. In New Rose, you have the first single, first punk single and an absolute classic. That just that one track mind starts with that drum and... Um, and it's just just brilliant. But there's loads of fantastic stab your back, feel the pain, fish, fan club. Uh, it's a great album. Uh, the damned, I think, at their rawest and their best. At number seven, I I did think about including this. Now um, I know they're a kind of a more of a mod band, but there's a youthful, punky exuberance to in the city, the album and the track in the city that made me feel like I needed to include it. I think the jam's best two songs are in the city and another song on this album. And the song that opens this album is my favourite jam song. It's Art School. And for those two songs, it's almost made the cut. But I can't include it because I don't think it's consistent enough. Now, this was a band that bucked that trend of the first album is the best because I think their third album is their best and it's all mod cons. Obviously, you can tell by the look that they weren't a punk band, but there's some brilliant songs on here. David Watts, The Kinks Cover, The In Crowd, uh, Mr. Clean, Billy Hunt, um, you know, A Bomb in Wardle Street, Down in the Tube Station at Midnight. Ah, oh, just, just a tremendously consistent, beautifully paced, uh, beautifully played album. You'd never guess they were a trio. They've got really nice kind of overdubs. It's a great album. Classic stuff from the jam. At number um, six, this is a band from Northern Ireland. This is a band who recorded this album during the Troubles in Northern Ireland. And you can hear that. You can, you can taste it. You can smell it in this album. This is inflammable material by uh, Stiff Little Fingers. This is an absolutely tremendous album. Suspect Device, Alternative Ulster, Johnny Was, Barbed Wire Love. Wow. You can, you can feel the tension. You, Jake Burns growls his way through this album. It is just a brilliant punk album. Their best, I think. Um, number five, we've got the best album, I think, from Australian band The Saints, Eternally Yours, their second album. I like the first album, I'm Stranded, but it was a bit more kind of had a almost a, um, a demo kind of vibe to it. But Eternally Yours contains two songs that I think are classics of this era. Um, this Perfect Day, which is just brilliant. It's a bit mc 5 e but it's got so much melody. It's a really aggressive kind of single. And Know Your Product, which includes horns, which I was a little bit, well, what's going on here? But wow, what a driving song that is. Know Your Product and This Perfect Day, classics of the genre and a great album. The second album from The Saints, Eternally Yours, is at number five. At number four, the debut from The Clash. Uh, this, for me, is by far and away, this will be controversial, but by far and away their best album. After this, I kind of lost interest. And when I was younger, when I bought this album, this has been to loads of parties with me, this album. I never, I rarely got beyond their first side. So the first side's got Janie Jones, Remote Control, I'm So Bored With the USA, the classic White Riot, which alongside Anarchy, New Rose, 
you know, are some of the uh, greatest songs of the era. Hate and War, What's My Name, London's Burning, Deny. Ah, oh, that first side is brilliant. Yeah, the second side is good, but the first side is, is classic. Um, brilliant songwriting. It's, it's really, really raw as well, which is what I like about it. I think they got a bit too clever later on. Um, and next is a band that are, are too um, young to be pub rock, but too old to be punk, possibly. But a brilliant band. Their debut is just superb. Rattus Nevegicus by The Stranglers. This has got some absolute classics. Of course, it's got um, Peaches. It's got Get a Grip on Yourself. The, the opener sometimes is brilliant. Goodbye to Lose London Lady. And I think they're absolute classic hanging around. This is superb. Album. It's almost it's like a greatest hits. I think it's brilliant. Uh, at number two, I I still can't decide which one of the two albums, because remember, it's only one album from any one band. And I've got two albums from this band. I can't decide between these two. American band, The Ramones. Uh, is it Leave Home or is it Rocket to Russia? This is this is brilliant. Glad to see you go. Give me shot tree. I remember you and oh, I love us so. Are just brilliant. Carbone not glue. Susie's their banger. Oh my god, that album's brilliant. This is superb as well. Slightly better produced. Their debut is brilliant, but it, these are just better produced and and more melodic. I think and just the songwriting is great. Cretin Hot, Rockaway Beach, one of the best songs of the entire 70s. I love it. Lock It Love, Sheena is a punk rocker, We're a Happy Family. Oh, Rocket to Russia, just a classic. You must own that. And I'm sure if you love punk, you'll love this one. If you haven't got this one, what, why? This is number one. It has to be, never mind the bollocks. One and done at a band. Absolutely brilliant. Four singles, which are classics. Pretty Vacant, one of the best songs ever made. God Save the Queen, Anarchy, which I said, alongside White Riot and, you know, those songs are just the sound of that era. Um, Bodies, oh, what a brilliant song, Bodies. is Holiday in the Sun that starts the album with its jackboot guitar at the start, or stamping at the start, the drums, fantastic. Even down to the raspberry at the end of EMI. This album is absolutely classic. I adore it. The production is amazing. The songs are brilliant. And that is my number one punk album out of the 40 you must have in your collection. Tell me what you think in the comments below. I'm sure sometime I'll be back with another video. Cheers all. See ya.